Minel doesn't treat you right. Minel is horrible. Minel is not a great company. Minel's just the worst. <laughs> Everybody. hope everybody's doing well so today actually going for a walk I already worked out this morning but you know just needed to go for a walk it's kind of windy but it's still a nice beautiful day I think it may rain actually I don't know but yeah we got to we got to talk I need to answer some of your questions but man love it love it love it <music> So one of the first questions I got was, what got me into playing congas? What about the musically interested me or playability? Things like that. And that's actually a very, very interesting story. Man, I'm actually gonna head back home. I think it's starting to drizzle. Nah, man, I ain't gonna do it. Man, I just wanna shoot you guys around. This weather, oh my gosh. That breeze is nice though. Oh my goodness. <sighs> Started really pouring at the end. All right, I got some packages to open. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's do this and let me continue answering that question. So many of you don't know, but I actually started playing percussion when I was seven years old. I started with a cowbell. My mom bought it for me. She saw that I was banging on stuff. So, um, you know, I got started like that. And then maybe like three years later, you know, I was using maybe like some minor percussion, some shakers. I was playing in my church and in my church, bought some timbales and that completely changed my life because I remember seeing Tito Puente and how he played and it was crazy how he played. Yes, Bea, Bea Martinez, thank you so much. Look, look at this, y'all. Look at this, look at this. She gave me two, so, oh boy, maybe I'll uh, give one away. Oh my gosh, thank you, Bea. Love you, girl. Thank you so much. She 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 loved the video I made about uh, Jimmy Morales, man. Um, this is very, very important, man. This is history. Can't wait to read it. Guys, I'll, I'll put the description down below if you guys are interested in getting this book. It's about Rey Barreto. You already know, you know, one of the big, you know, videos about this channel was from Rey Barreto. That kind of like blew up and, and got people's attention. So thank you, Bea. I appreciate this, man. I love history. I love knowledge. I love things like this, man. So appreciate it. So yeah, I, I liked the timbales because at that time, I actually enjoyed the drum kit, you know, kit drum and playing that. Uh, I didn't play at that time, but I enjoyed it. You know, I grew up in an era where I watched Neil Peart and Steve Gadd and Dave Weckl and Dennis Chambers. And of course, I grew in the, up in the 90s. So I listened to like Red Hot Chili Peppers. So I saw Chad Smith, I Blink-182, Travis Barker, um, Nirvana. Of course, I saw Dave Grohl kill it. And then when that, you know, situation happened, he went to Foo Fighters, I just... I grew up in that era where I loved drumming. I loved drums. So when I saw that, you know, these were kind of like drums, but for Latin music, you know, and I started to play timbales and I didn't look back until the age of like about 14, 15, where our um, conga player from the church moved and um, they asked me if I could play congas. I hopped on, hated it, hated it, hated it so much. I hated playing the congas, y'all. I, I don't know, like, people don't believe me, but I hated it. They hurt my hands. I had no timing. I had no feeling. But I got into work, you know. I started to practice. I started to really get, you know, passionate about it. And I haven't looked back ever since. And I can express myself a lot easier when it comes to the congas. So I love it. I love it. I'm telling y'all. All right. Let's see here. Oh, snap. I already know what this is. Oh man, this is actually from a friend of mine, Alberto Nassif. He is an amazing, amazing conga player. Um, and uh, he actually called me the moment I announced that I switched to Mopert and um, we spoke, man. Such an awesome guy, great perspective. Oh man, love it, love it. Oh man, love it. I think he's based out of Chicago. So um, 
Yeah, I'm gonna take a listen to it. I try to see if I can find it on uh on iTunes, you know, and I want go, I want go. This is crazy. Look, look at, look at, look at that. Look at that, y'all. Look at that. That's beautiful. This is beautiful. I love Latin jazz. Look at that. Latin jazz Christmas. What? Thank you, Alberto. Seriously, un abrazo. Much love. Can't wait to just check these out. Pop them in the car. I'm actually gonna go on a little video shoot later because I have to, you know, work, do my video, video stuff, and might listen to it on the way. This next question is, if you could play with any group out there from any point in time, who would it be? Now that's tough. That is tough because, man, like I have categories. I love music in general. So if it was like on the Latin kind of side, Latin jazz or Latin, I would probably Iraquere, Timbalaye, maybe Los Bambang. I mean, there's so many. Like, I would love to play with, like, Havana de Primera or Alain Perez. My gosh, like, just, these people are crazy, man, crazy. And if we're going to talk about, like, maybe the American side, um, you know, someone like Marvin Gaye, uh, Bill Withers, you know, uh, even, like, today, like, Bruno Mars, I love, you know, it's just so musical. And if we're thinking to talk about the, the gospel side, I would love to play with Fred Hammond. Fred Hammond. Oh my gosh, I, I love me some Fred Hammond. I don't know, he's so just, ah, he's different. He's different when, when with his approach to, to gospel music, man. Um, yeah, Israel Houghton too. Like, I would love to, to play with them. But man, it, that's hard. Any group, I don't know. I mean, I would love to play Richie Ray Bobby Cruz. You know what I mean? Like, there's just so, so many options out there, man. Oh, Bea, I love you, girl. Oh my gosh, she sent me another Jimmy. Another Jimmy. Oh, such a, such an important book, man. Such an important book. Oh, yeah. Now, I actually know what this is. I actually received a shirt uh, last week that I want to just, you know, dedicate some time for, um, for a specific video. But, you know, it has a great, great cause. Um, but I actually know what this is, and I think... A lot of you guys will probably be interested in this, but oh snap. All right, y'all, are you guys ready to see this? Um, this is crazy, man. Somebody that, that, you know, is very, very important to this channel actually made this. Um, you know, he said, is it okay if I, if I make this and I send it to you? I was like, of course, and I'm definitely gonna wear it. Um, you know, it is not my design, it is his design, but I thought I'll share it to you guys. And he did this. Can that pick up? Oh yeah. Oh man. It says gotta love it. Gotta love it. Conga timbalen bongo. Man. This is crazy, man. This is definitely <laughs> so awesome. This is actually from Paul Doherty. If you don't know who he is, he's actually the one that designed my logo. You know, it's very special. Um, especially at the time that he did it. He did it out of you know, just wanted to share, thanking me, and I love that logo, man. I love that logo. So he reached out and said, you know, can I make you this shirt? And I was like, of course, dude. This is this is great. Uh, so I again, this is not my shirt. This is not my design. I'm not selling this, but he is willing to make some for you guys. Um, I'll put all his information down below, where you can contact him directly, or you can you know get one of these shirts, man. I'm definitely gonna be wearing it on the channel. You know, gotta love it. Oh man, you gotta love it, man. Thank you, Paul. Seriously appreciate it, brother. It is, it is awesome, man. It's this kind of stuff, you know, gets me emotional because, you know, this is your art, your art, and you're sharing it with me, and it's just, it's awesome, man. Thank you, brother. Really appreciate it. I just realized that it's lunchtime. I haven't eaten lunch. Kind of, kind of getting hungry. So yeah, let me answer the next question. So somebody asked, have I ever thought about documenting all my lessons, all my tutorials in a book? And I did think about that. I have thought about that. I'm actually in the process of trying to put all that together so I could release an ebook, make it easier for you guys, you know, with transcriptions and everything, with references of the video, a little bit more in depth and detail. Uh, but I want to make it unique. It's a process. I also want to make it super affordable so everybody can you know, get it and use it. And 
I just, I realized like I have a lot of lessons. There's a lot of stuff that I put up and I, I just don't keep track of it all. And I'm going to try to figure out a way, hopefully make a website where it's easier to understand, to go through the tutorials. But yeah, man, it's a process. It's a lot of work. And I'm telling you, this was never like a goal. This was never my thought to eventually do something like this. So when I first started this channel, I just wanted to share. So, but I realized that it's requiring a lot more stuff that makes it even easier for people to understand it. So yeah, that's definitely in the works. The next question is anything about hand care, things to take care of your hands, uh, your nails, all that stuff. I actually uh, want to make a video on that, but I actually want to make it when I've been gigging a lot. And I was planning to do it last year, but of course last year, ugh, horrible. But yeah, I think it's important to talk about that. Um, I have methods that help me recover a lot faster, help me heal a lot faster, ways that I've been able to take care of my hands so they don't look so beat up. My hands, you know, that's, that's, that's my hands, man. You know, I still got some, you know, calluses there, but I always try to, you know, really take care of my hands. So I do have a process that I do want to share with you guys, but I want it to be as authentic as possible. So when my hands are all swole up, that you guys can see how that works and uh, you know how I do it and then the healing process, how quick it is. So yeah, I plan on doing a video about that in the future. So the question that maybe a lot of you guys, la pregunta que me hicieron todo el mundo, everybody. What happened with Mino? ¿Qué pasó con Mino? Te botaron Mino. What happened? They, they dropped you. I knew they dropped you. And you'd be shocked how many messages I've gotten that people said, man, I know Mino doesn't treat you right. Mino is horrible. Mino is not a great company. Mino's just the worst. I've gotten messages like that and it's unbelievable just how much people assume, like they just assume the worst, man. But let me explain. Déjame explicar. I'm gonna try to do this in English and in Spanish because, uh, or Spanglish as we like to say it. But a lot of people, you know, ask me, you know, what happened with Mino, when when you know did all this happen? You know, qué pasó? And and so I'm gonna I'm gonna you know speak, translate myself with this. First of all, Mino is an unbelievably great company. Please understand that. Por favor, entiende que Mino es lo máximo. Es lo máximo. Ellos son buena gente. Me trataron bien. Literally, they they gave me an opportunity that not a lot of people would have at the time that they did. Um, so I am grateful for them, man. I am absolutely, you know, happy with how they treated me, happy with the whole journey and the opportunity that they gave me, you know? Um, so yeah, so I actually was, um, a huge fan of Moperk for a long time. I've explained that, you know, yo seguido Moperk por, por años, por años. And I'll actually insert a clip here. Uh, from the 10k giveaway in regards to uh, Mo Perk, uh, I was already signed with Mino at the time. I just, you know, signed in August of 2018, and this was in December of 2018, where I give Francis from Mo Perk a shout out. I also want to give a shout out to Francis from Mo Perk. He actually uh, messaged me for me to work on my audio. At the time, you know, I was being lazy. I didn't really, I was just on a boom mic and played it that way and I thought that was okay. But no, he, he actually was like, nah, man, you need, a, uh, you need to work on your audio. And if you ever listen to any of Mo Perk's stuff, that's Francis mixing it, man. It sounds so buttery and beautiful and woo! You know, so uh, hearing that from him, especially as a craftsman as he is and the art that he does with Mo Perk, I had to listen to him, man. So since that moment where he reached out to me, I have seriously stopped being lazy and every video I started to set up audio. So I always had to like EQ it and make sure everything was good. I tried to make sure things weren't distorted and make it easier for you guys to listen to the, to, to the video and to listen to the tutorial because that was just as important, man. So Francis, thank you for just being humble enough to reach out to me in that way, man. So much love for everybody over there, Mo Perk. Uh, they are, they have some great congas, man. So if you're looking for some handmade crazy stuff, Mo Perk is 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 a great option, man. So thank you, Francis, again. Increíble, no? Yo siempre he hablado de Mo Perk. 
y gente que me preguntan de, de, de congas, yo siempre les digo, mira, si tú quieres unas congas que, que son hechas por mano, Mopark. When I signed with Mino, it was uh, not just an opportunity to be part of a great company, a great company that had culture and history. It was just awesome. I never reached out to LP to get endorsed. I never reached out to Pearl or anything. I did reach out to Mino at a time where I don't think either of us were were ready for it. Um, I think I reached out to them when I had like 900 subscribers and then uh, I signed with them, I think, after uh, a year later, where I ended up having like seven or eight thousand, I think, or nine. So I think I think it was eight, um, where I signed with Mino. Um, they reached out to me uh, since I already had that contact. Great, great people. We worked something out, and it was awesome. Trust me, it was awesome. I'm still going to be using Mino stuff. Sí, sí. Yo voy a usar las cosas de Mino. Yo lo voy a usar. Yo todavía tengo las congas. Yo, yo he comprado cosas de Mino antes que firmé con Mino. Yeah, that's something that people need to understand. I was buying Mino stuff before I even signed with Mino. So when people say, Ah, oh, man, you're just... No, no, no. Get that out of here. Please understand, I've been a huge fan of Mino for a long time as well. I think they're one of the few companies that, that are big that offer certain things that Sorry, I had to adjust my brightness. It was just like crazy up in here. Um, but yeah, they're one of those big companies that offer just a lot of different varieties. You know, they have little things that even bigger companies, a catalog that bigger companies don't offer. So yeah, I loved Mino, man. I still love Mino, but I love Moperk more. Um, and I've loved Moperk for a long time. So when that opportunity presented itself around the end of January, um, again, me and Francis have always had um, communication and, you know, we, yeah, it was time to step up. So I stepped up, uh, I contacted uh, my rep. Uh, we're still in good standings. You're still going to see some Mino products um, here uh, because I'm just always going to buy Mino stuff if it's not, you know, Moperk, you know, so... I'm not going to play Mano drums, so you're not going to see like Mano bongos, you're not going to see Mano congas or timbales or djembe. Oh, well, you probably still see a Mano djembe here and there because, uh, yeah, again, you know, if, if Mo Perk doesn't offer, I'm going to be playing, you know, these other instruments because I love percussion. So, again, you know, I I'm still have a great relationship with the people with Mano. I love them. Thank you, Herman. Thank you, de verdad, de corazón. The ammo, bro, we still text and it's hilarious. The the amount of people just thinking the worst, the worst about Mino, man. Come on, y'all. You know, it's, it's, I was with them for over two years, almost three. And, um, you know, it was just an awesome experience, an awesome opportunity that I will be forever grateful for. And, um, you know, so it, it's, there's no, you know, bad issues. No hay nada malo, no hay nada que, Estamos en mala situación, me trataron bien, en de verdad, me trataron súper, súper bien, uh, súper amables y súper como consideraron como yo era, you know, de, en, en el canal y me dieron oportunidad de hacer ciertas cosas. Um, but I knew, I knew that there's certain things that I wanted to talk about that on a business standpoint, I wouldn't be able to do if I was signed with Mino. So to, to, to be part of the family that that's your dream, you know, drum makers, like, you know, and work with a company also like Manito Percussion and still have those relationships and those open doors, like, come on, y'all. Like, it, it doesn't, you know, I'm not saying that, uh, you know, it doesn't compare, but it's something a lot more personal. And I think I have a lot more freedom to offer people um, certain advice in regards to drums, you know, if, like I said in, in the why Mo Perk, not everybody will be able to afford Mo Perk. No todo el mundo va a poder comprar la, 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 las congas, los bongos de Mo Perk. Yo ya sé eso, por favor. Yo, yo, yo soy humano, yo, yo soy músico, yo entiendo eso. I am a musician. I understand this. But if I want the highest quality for my channel, which I believe I always strive for high quality content on a video, on audio, on sound, everything, everything. I always try to present it. Why not have an instrument that reflects me? Why not have that? Why not have that? Why not have something that is me? Literally, you look at those drums. If my name wasn't on it, 
and you saw those, you'd be like, hey, those, those drums remind me of Eric. Because that's what th they do. They do. They literally are, are, are an extension of who I am. And that's what I love about Mo Perk. Because they're able to do that. They're definitely able to do that for you and, and work with you in regards to all this, man. So I'm excited. Again, thank you, Minel. Love you guys. Trust me. You're, if you don't see Mo Perk, you're going to see Minel on this channel. And that's because, again, I, I wasn't just signed with them because of that. I, I, it's a company I believed in and, and I still believe in and I still use. So if I you see me with some Mino Clavis, if you see me with a Mino Bell, if you see me with a Mino Weedle, if you see me with a Mino Shaker, don't be like, Oh, you're with Mo Perk. You're with Mo Perk. You're not supposed to be playing Mino. Like, get that out of here, man. Get that out of here because I'm still going to be using Mino. So it, it's all love with Mino. It's all love. I love them. It, it's a great opportunity that they gave me and I can't wait to see all the family over there whenever NAM opens and we can just all hang out and chill because again there's a business aspect and there's a personal aspect I chose the personal I chose to be part of a family that's a small family like Mo Perk and use my platform to bring awareness to a company that I've loved for a long time you know I, I do I, I haven't been so excited to just play drums like I've been now, you know, ever since I got those drums. And it's only been a week, you know, it's crazy. It's crazy. No, not even a week, two weeks now. Two weeks. And I'm just like, you know, still shook. Still shook. But yeah, let me keep on answering those questions because I know a lot of you guys are watching this video just because you guys wanted the tea. You guys wanted the drama for your mama. You guys love it. You, lo you love drama. Can you imagine if, like, Mino treated me bad? Can you imagine that? Can you imagine just like what, how it would make, make them look? You know, come on now. Mino's awesome. They are great people that work over there. I think they're very artist centric, you know? So if you are a percussionist and want, you know, some advice, reach out to me, ask me about Mino. And I'm telling you, great people. You're gonna love the people there. They work with you. They're awesome. And, and you know, I think that it's, it's you know, th there's no, there's no, beef between me and them at all I again I still text the rep I still text the rep we still talk you know I think people just the, again it's so much competition I hate it I hate competition like it there's like friendly competition like where it's all love I'm just trying to be good and you know keep up but you know competition where it's like oh I'm no longer with them I'm just not gonna talk to like come on man get out get that out of here this this channel does not reflect any of that. I'm very, very community driven. I love Mino. I, again, I, I grew up loving LP too. So if you play LP, I'm gonna be like, oh, you suck because you don't play Mo Perk. Like, get, get out of here. That's not what this channel is about. Again, it, Francis knew who, who he was signing. Francis knew what this channel is about. And I'm always gonna rep Mo Perk going forward. It's, I'm, I'm at the dream spot. I'm gonna do things for them that I think they ever had. So you know, we're going to be doing some crazy stuff in the future once things start opening up. We're going to go over there to Canada. So I'm going to take you guys with me. We're going to do some crazy stuff, man. But again, all love with Mino. All right, on with the questions. So somebody asked this in Spanish, but uh, I'm going to read it and then I'll translate it for you guys. But it's pretty interesting. I think it's a cool question. It's something I want to show you guys too. So, Hola, yo soy Francesca y hace tiempo que te sigo. Me gusta mucho tu video, perfecta explicación y mucho humor. Mi pregunta es, ¿cuánto instrumento de percusión tienes en tu casa? Porque es difícil resistir a la envidia de testear un nuevo instrumento de percusión. Tienes también de África o de otros países. Gracias a la próxima. So they said, uh, hello, uh, my name is Francesca. Uh, I've been, it's been a long time since I've followed you, uh, love your videos, perfect explanation and humor. My question is, how many instruments do you have of percussion in your house? Because it's really difficult to resist the temptation to test other new instruments of percussion. Do you have some from Africa or other countries? Um, yeah, yo, yo nunca he contado cuantos instrumentos tengo. Um, yo sé que tengo muchas. Tengo de claves, tengo guiros, tengo guira. Tengo yembes, tengo congas, tengo timbales, tengo bongose, um, tengo shakers, tengo shakers, tengo uh, de todo. I have a lot of stuff, a lot of instruments, a lot of instruments. 
But there's two instruments that I want to show you guys that are very, very unique. You know, dos instrumentos que son bien únicos, que um, todavía yo, yo lo guardo de corazón. Uh, quizás un, uno de estos días lo voy a explicar en el canal. You know, maybe one day I'll explain it in this channel, but it's cool. Let me show you. El primer es esta. This is the first one. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay, there you go. So it's this one. Uh, my cousin actually got me this. Uh, she went to um, Cameroon, I believe, and she came back with this. This is a very interesting instrument. You know, if you tune it, you actually have to hit it right here. Um, but yeah, this is straight Africa. Toda Africa. Um, but. But yeah, this is something that's really special. I do want to talk about it on this channel. Um, more in depth, what it's made out of, what kind of wood. Um, but it's very, very unique. Uh, she got me that. She brought back this gift. And I was like, man, increíble. Look, look. Yeah, it makes, it makes noise. But yeah, I need to tune it. So I need to kind of start hitting it right here. Um, push the skin down um, with these bands. So yeah, this is a very, very interesting instrument. And I actually show it on my channel all the time. It's always up here. It's always up there. It's always up there. Oh man, you know, along with that that right there, and you know, I have all this stuff. These are all instruments, you know, all these instruments. Look at that, mino bongo for all y'all crazy people thinking I don't love mino. It's crazy. All right, let me show you the next one. So the next one is this one. Um, a friend of mine. I was actually part of a live recording concert, and he gave me this at one of the rehearsals. Um, he he says it's from Guatemala. Um, de verdad, yo no sé, yo no sé de qué es hecho, um, yo creo, you know, se siente como vaca, o chivo, maybe like cow or goat, but I want to play that and make a video about that, probably one of the most interesting, again, I don't know, I don't know what it's made out of, it's very, very unique, very unique, very unique, um, but yeah, that's, he says it's from Guatemala, um, I don't know if anybody knows. Si alguien sabe de dónde es esto, pues algo increíble. But yeah, this is all my stuff. Look at that. Some LP Galaxies just chilling here, man. Chilling. And then, you know, other instruments. Todo instrumento. Tengo cosa de mi cosa de fotografía. And on to the next question. What's going on with my congas? My, my mino congas. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Yes, I still have them. And I'm still going to keep them. I'm still going to keep them along with those bongos up there um because you know um these are very special to me these drums uh getting them from mino uh the meaning behind all that for me personally um just meant a lot they're still in great condition they look good they sound good um but um these are going to be drums that i take you know to my rehearsals uh, we call that beater drums i guess and to have kachiro thompson series as your beater drums like come on now incredible incredible but i do not plan on selling them i do not plan on giving them away uh it's going to be hard because you know once you play some mo perks and then you hop on something like this it, it gets you kind of like you get spoiled you're like man this sound but yeah these drums sound great man they sound great for for factory made drums and um again i'm, I'm still planning on keeping them i'm still planning on keeping those bongos these bongos are again awesome for 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 factory made bongos those are just so legit so legit um but yeah i'm grateful that that i have these and that i'm gonna still keep them you know if something happens that like i need to sell them then you know all right i get it but um you know i had sold my my palladiums sold those a long time ago so alguien preguntó qué diferencia ve de esas congas a cualquiera de las marcas famosas de ahora en cuanto sonido tacto etc Lo que son sensacionales. So what he asked, what difference is there between these congas that I have here uh, versus, you know, the more famous brands in regards to the sound, uh, the, the build quality, all that. Lo voy a contestar. Yo, yo ya hice un video el, el martes uh, explicando lo en español, la diferencia. So I actually made a video explaining that already. But to put it in the most simplest terms, these are handmade drums. They're completely handmade. 
Para poner en palabras súper sencillas, estas congas son hechas por mano completamente. So, la madera fue cortada por mano, la, 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 los, lo, la, los hierros fueron hechos por mano, todo, 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 las coronas, todo, todo fue hecho por mano. Y en vez de las, las compañías famosas, todo es hecho por, por máquinas y en fábricas y cosas así, um, en formas y en detalles un poco más fácil para hacerlos. Um, esto cuesta mucho tiempo, uh, mucho esfuerzo, mucho sacrificio en comparación que unas máquinas lo hacen por uno. Um, so ese es quizás lo, lo más. Y se nota en el sonido. It, it's noticeable in the sound. It's like versus a factory made drum, you could hear that sound. Versus a handmade drum, you could hear the sound difference. So there is a major, major difference in regards to build quality and sound when it comes to companies like Moperk or companies like Manito Percussion or companies like PM Percussion or Mame or OC Percussion. There's a lot of companies out there that just do everything by hand. And this is one of them. So let me answer two more questions and then I actually got to record something. And I'll tell you guys what I'm recording. And it's very important. Very important. It's kind of nice. But yeah, the first question is, it was a suggestion of what sizes they should get. Um, they're interested in getting Moperk drums. You know, what sizes. Um, they're, they're not able to get four, so they're thinking about getting three. Should they get a 10-inch quinto or an 11 Uh, and three quarters, you know, what, what, what sizes? If I were to choose three, if I were to just choose three drums from Moperk, if I wasn't going to get these four in particular, I would probably get a 12 and a half inch tumba, an 11 and three quarters uh, conga, and an 11 inch quinto, if I had to choose three. Because the 11 inch quinto, you could tune it up as high as you want and as low as you want. So at least if I'm only going to be playing three, and I did that a lot with Minel, when I, you know, wanted to do that, I would literally use the quinto as my third drum, you know, so it would be the second lowest drum, and I would still play on the conga. So I would choose those three sizes, um, but yeah, there is a big difference in regards to tone on a 10-inch requinto. That, that thing pops, man. It's crazy how high you could really crank up a 10-inch requinto. But if I only have enough money to just buy three, it would be 11 inch quinto, 11 and three quarter inch conga, and then a 12 and a half inch tumba. Might be tempted to do that 13 inch tumba, because that 13 inch tumba, boy, look, look, look at, oh my gosh, that, that thing is crazy. Like, boom, like just, just like a bomb exploded. So this next question is actually in Spanish. Uh, Uh, but I'll translate it in English as well. Saludos, Eric. Sobre los cueros manito. ¿Qué tanto les afecta los cambios de temperatura en la afinación cuando tocas en tu estudio y luego los pruebas en lugar abierto? ¿Podrías también compartirnos tu experiencia y los beneficios de haber estado con Mino y ahora el cambio a Moperg? Saludos. Bueno. So what he's asking is, uh, what difference does it make when you use Manito Percussion Skins when you're inside in a place like this versus when you're out in the open, you know, uh, playing outside. I actually made a video about that. Hice un video sobre eso. Um, lo voy a poner aquí. Uh, pero en realidad hace una diferencia. Claro, son, son cueros naturales. Son cueros de verdad. So el, la temperatura siempre va a cambiar. Y se puede bajar o se puede subir. Uh, si es un lugar súper, súper caliente, um, eso todo, todo afecta. Um, you know, with, with natural skins, temperature always changes, especially when you're playing outside in an uncontrolled environment, you know. So um, that's definitely why there's a benefit in playing synthetic skins, you know. You know los cueros sintéticos, uno puede tocar afuera y no va a cambiar nada. Claro, tú pierdas cierto beneficio del sonido de un cuero, de verdad, como un cuero sintético, pero es el beneficio. So there is benefits for synthetic skins. You know, you just put them on and, and they won't ever lose their, their tone. They never, won't ever lose their tuning because that's what they were made for. That's one of their main purposes as well as being good on your hands. But the next question that he asked is, um, you know, what are the benefits versus, you know, being from with Mino now with, with Mo Perk? Uh, ¿Qué son los beneficios de, de estando con Mino y ahora con... con como Perk. Um, y, you know, yo voy a hablar bien claro. Um, Mino es una compañía mucho más grande que Mo Perk. So, el beneficio que uno podría estar con, con Mino era, 
eh, ellos tenían tantas personas. Tú te ponen tu nombre en un website, te ponen tu nombre en Instagram y gente te van a seguir. You know, Mino was such a big company that in comparison to, to Mo Perk, that of course, you know, they put your name on their website, they put your name on their Instagram, people are going to start following you. You know, people are going to start noticing who you are uh, because they are such, such a big company. Um, so that's a big benefit why being with them. Um, but a benefit for me, you know, un beneficio para mí para estar como Perk es yo tengo una cierta libertad para colaborar un poco más en mi manera creativo um, que yo no creo que pudo hacer con, con Mino. Um, hay ciertas cosas que, que yo voy a estar haciendo para ellos que yo no creo que, que podría hacer con, con Mino. Y no, no es culpa de Mino tampoco, porque ellas, ellos tienen gente. Tienen gente brutal. Si, si tú vas a coger a Eric Pérez o a William Cachiro Thompson, ¿quién tú vas a coger? Yo siendo Eric Pérez voy a coger Cachiro, por favor. Like, if you were to choose someone to promote, you know, like a lesson or something, would you choose... Me, Eric Perez, or William Cachiro Thompson? Of course. You're going to choose Cachiro Thompson. I would choose Cachiro. Like, like they have some heavy, heavy hitters over there. Um, and respectfully, you know, they, they, they are they are great. You know, they have Diego Gale. Have you seen Diego Gale's congas? Like, it's, it's crazy. Like, they have these people. And, and I fall, com like, way short in comparison to them. So, I know that I understandably limited to what I could do um, with Mino versus, you know, a company like Moperk. And I think um, with Moperk, I could do certain things that um, allow me to be creative, you know. Yo puedo ser super super creativo con, con, con Moperk. And eso es lo que me encanta. Me encanta Moperk. Um, la gente allá son buena onda, man. Son, son gente increíble, muy amables y, y gente trabajadora. Gente como tú y yo que estamos aquí laborando muchísimo, um, y, y, you know, gente como Mino, los reps son increíbles, I mean, son, son gente, like, if I were to, to really, like, be serious, I would have only stayed with Mino because of the reps, like, they're just great, you know, but I wanted something a lot more than that, and I wanted something with, with Mo Perk, that is just beautiful man um and i'm excited i'm excited for the content if i wasn't excited even before like with content that i was making for you guys imagine now imagine the just production value that's about to just go off the roof because i'm doing stuff from a perk like it's just it's crazy it's crazy so yeah i got a lot of stuff to do today and i actually gotta record something real quick for my friend dolly marie from puerto rico she's an amazing percussionist such a great tone she raps she sings she does it all and she has a project that's actually releasing in june called women, women with, with rhythm, rhythm. And I'm so glad to just be a part, you know, of this announcement. And it's just awesome. So thank you, Dali, for, for including me, mama. De verdad. Te amo de corazón. Uh, love you, girl. And uh, yeah, it's very, very important, man. Women in rhythm. Super important. I just, I, I can't stand it. Some, I, like, I've heard terms like, oh, she plays good for a woman. Or a female percussionist. Like, you know, I get it. You know, we refer people as female percussionists because it's such a male-dominated, you know, part. But... I know women that play so good, like such a great tone, so talented in all areas of percussion. So Dali Marie is doing a project that's so meaningful, so important to the community. I'm excited to see it. It's coming out in June. So I'm about to record something for her. I'm going to make a solo and dedicate it, you know, for all the women percussionists out there. And they're amazing. Thank you for being part of this, man. Thank you, all the females out there that just said, you know what? Forget all of this. I'm going to play some congas. I'm going to play some mongols. I'm going to play a djembe. I'm going to play timbal. I'm going to play anything, man. Like, I, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I, lo I absolutely love it. So to be a part of this, it is awesome. But you know what kind of sucks is after I do this, I have to tear all this down because I have to start getting ready for my video shoot later. It's around later in the evening, so I have to pack up all my equipment go do that video shoot and it's going to be an awesome shoot i might uh show you some behind the scenes of that because you know that is an area of of my job that a lot of people don't know about that i do a lot of videography and photography stuff as well and um that this is you know part of my job too so i'm excited to to 
do this after that, but I have to pack up everything, man. Pack up my lights, pack up my mics and my cameras, make sure everything is set and ready. It's crazy. Yeah, I, I might show you, you know, some behind the scenes of that. It's kind of crazy. But seriously, thank you guys for submitting your questions. Thank you guys for the support and love with this Moperk venture, man. Um, I am beyond, beyond grateful to be a part of this. And, and I love these drums. I love... Ugh, I love these drums. It's just, it's just crazy. But, um, you know, I am grateful for each and every one of you. For each and every one of you. You guys are are what make me keep on going, man. You know, you guys are learning. You guys are, you know, developing and growing in your playing. And that's why we do this. This is why I started this channel to, to help people out. And it's just, it's a blessing, man. So I appreciate you guys. Love you guys. And uh, hopefully next week we'll do some tutorials and get it going. Get back into the program. All right, y'all. See you guys in the next video. So, yeah, this is how the set looks like without everything taken down. This is everything I'm going to take to the video shoot. These are my lights and some stands, some tripods. Uh, just my drone because i got to get some B-roll and my camera bag with my mic. So I have other little stuff here, but it's about right about the lenses. I'll take two bodies. I'll take a 24-70, and a 7200. But um, this kind of works in all my memory cards. Um, but it's crazy, you know. Got to take my ca my computer and you know put it in there. But um, yeah, it's just crazy. I have some other lenses I could take, but this is all I really need. And I might just take some stands. But oh, I do need to take my little bags to weigh all this stuff down. Sometimes safety first, always safety. But yeah, it's crazy. Uh, everything normally this is all that I use except the drone. Don't use it on the set, but. Almost there, all of that, I use that to make these videos. Kind of nice. It's crazy. My goodness. My goodness.